Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plant Obsessed, and today we're going to have a look at the African night crawlers. You're never going to guess what we're feeding them. That's right, more of my pumpkin stash. When the urban worm bag fell apart, the zipper died on me, I went and took the African night crawlers and I put them in these flat um, bins. And they've been here all summer and fall. I got the African night crawlers a Christmas present. Shh, don't tell. I don't know when it's going to make it here. It might be after Christmas. But let's just say they're going back in a bag. Today we're going to feed them up and get them ready for their move. I'm going to try and get them to all stay in one good place. Not really horizontal migrating so much as making it easier for when I have to harvest the worms to put them in their new home. So, sort of a, a migration, yes. Uh, but I'm not going to take the time to do a full horizontal migration on these guys. Um, this is just so that I can get the bulk of them in one swing and then I will have to do uh, by any means necessary to reduce the bulk to start out the new bag. Um, because I'm not doing what I did last time, which was wrong. If you watch my urban worm bag all the way from the beginning, uh, yeah, don't do that. Uh, don't fill the bag all the way up. That's bad, wrong. Don't do it. And I'm not doing it again. So this time I'm going to reduce these three into a very small amount, just the worms, very shortly. So we're going to give them a lot of what they like, pumpkin. All right, let me put you down and we can start digging around and having a look at them. Okay, so looking in on bin number one here, you can tell there's a, a lot of the uh, paper bedding in here. And I have been feeding them pumpkin. Um, so you can see we do have a really good worm ball here. Uh, anybody that has African night crawlers um, will know that these are some very dang small African night crawlers. I have made no attempts whatsoever to bulk them up back to their original size. Originally they were the size of pencils, regular number two pencils, easily. And they are just about the same size as red wigglers or blue worms um, once they stay in a bin where they're not being purposely bulked up. So for anybody who um, looks at the gorgeous big worms on the internet and thinks, ah, oh, I want one of those, I, you know, I want some of those, um, be forewarned, they are tropical. You cannot put them in your northern hemisphere 60 degree basement and have them live nicely. They will um, die down and reduce in size. So um, hindsight being 2020, having to deal with these in the upstairs of my house rather than the basement, um, I don't think I'd have done it. I really don't. Uh, if I live someplace down south like Florida or Georgia or something, I would totally get these guys, get more of them because they are very good at turning over uh, carbon. Um, the paper bedding that was in here is probably the equivalent of a one or two gallon bucket and it's only been in there for a week and a half or two weeks. I mean they are monsters when it comes to blowing through carbon. Um, they are awesome. They're just not awesome at 60 degrees. They're awesome at 7580 which is what this upstairs uh, dining room is at. So, you've seen a little bit of a worm ball. You can see they do eat whatever is rotten, whatever soft. So this part here is hard. That part was soft and they got into it. But what we're going to do today is we're going to start them on sort of a, a horizontal migration so that I can swap out these bins in a, in a couple of weeks when when their Christmas present gets here. Not really sure how long it takes to get one. I know they said it could take up to a month or so. So I'm making sure that I keep a really good stash of stuff they love all in one place so I can get a hold of the little boogers. I'm going to move you down here a little bit. And then we're going to feed them, you know, it's probably about a pound or two of pumpkin. This has been frozen a little bit. I mean, it's been outside frozen, not been in my freezer frozen. So I don't know how many of these seeds are going to live or not. 
This is also another one, of, another one of the good things about the African night crawlers. I know I bash them a little bit, but I feed them all of my plant scraps for my inside for my bonsais. So every time as I'm cutting my bonsais down, I feed them to the African night crawlers, and they turn. Um, I mean, that's an, an orchid leaf and you know branches, full-size branches of bonsai trees, not full-size trees. And they manage to just, <laughs> they do, they decimate the carbon. They do a really good job. I think there's another piece of pumpkin here. It's kind of cool, isn't it? How it all kind of just gets whittled away. But I am going to put that down there at that end too. And then I'm going to smooth them out until I've given them a vine here. All right. So I'm going to move you over to the next bin. All righty, bin number two. These are all populated pretty similar. When I took and uh, split the bag, I did try to make them pretty similar. Um, just for, for feeding's sake, because I do notice that because they go through carbon so fast, uh, the one time that I had them in a flat system, they did, uh, you know, really eat through everything, like the carbon really fast if there was a big population of them. At first, I know a lot of people were like, are you sure your bin hasn't been invaded by blues and euros and everything? Well, maybe. But I know that they're still African night crawlers because of the rate at which they go through the paper bedding and the like. They really do still, even at their little tiny size, let's see, here's another worm ball. Um, even at their little size, they still just are bizarrely quick at eating their uh, carbon. A little bit. Just give them the rest of that bowl and their leftover feedings from before. Because the uh, room that I have the African night crawlers in is also where I keep my orchids and everything, I do keep this room warm. It's right on top of the furnace. So this room is the warmest room in the house, which seems to be working out really well for these guys. Um, when I had them in the basement and it was 65 degrees, they really were unhappy. They got very lethargic. They didn't go through very much food that winter. As soon as I moved them up here, kabam, they're eating paper like a bunch of termites. All right, on to bin number three. All right, here we are, bin number three. And like I said, I feed them all of the... This is part of a uh, mandevalia vine <laughs> that I brought in the house for the winter. And uh, I don't know, this was like six feet long a couple weeks ago. So they're doing a good job. Let's see. So got some on a little bit of pumpkin from last week. And then I will just move everything down here, make a good feeding zone. Because it is rough on them doing a light migration. I think that, you know, it really does stress out the worms. But it is the fastest way to get worms to go into one spot. They absolutely, even the African night crawlers who are less photosensitive, um, they, they really, uh, as far as like uh, European night crawlers or blue worms or red whalers, who move very quickly out of the light. And that's another way that you can kind of tell, do I still have African night crawlers? Um, they have the equivalent of 500 uh, watts of light on them right now. And they're like, do, 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 I think I'll get a tan. Um, yeah, if these were red wigglers or something, they would be very quickly running down into the, into the substrate. All right, well, so, Oops, there's another one, another kind of a worm ball. So we didn't, we haven't looked at these guys in a little while. 
but right now what we're doing is we're focusing on getting them to move so that they can go into their new home. I did buy a uh, mini mammoth, as I had been saying I'd been wanting, and it just reminded me, I was watching one of AV's videos, and he said something about being an affiliate, and I was like, hey, let's, let's do this now before I forget again. And uh, it's, really, it's really easy. You just click on the affiliate link. It takes you in. Um, bada bing, bada boom, you're done. You've got yourself a, a new vermi bag thing. I am not an affiliate, so, but I have had an urban worm bag, which in my situation lived for about two years. I have high hopes that um, military grade fabric from Vermi bag will last me and my antics a little bit longer. We'll see. All right, guys. Well, that's it for today in the African Night Cry. All right, guys. Well, that's it for the African Night Crawlers today. Uh, if you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. And if you're not already a member of my worm family, why aren't you a member of my worm family? Click that subscribe button. And if you want to know exactly what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that little bell notification. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.